in general, how did the defense perform on Saturday for what you want them to accomplish out there on the field? And what can they take away from that experience going into this week? Well, I think you take away it's a game one experience. So, you know, just live tackling, um, you know, I think is a big part of college football now when you get those game one experiences. Um, but for the most part, you know, I think we had 49 snaps, um, did a really good job on third down. Tackling was solid. Um, I think overall it was a solid performance. When you, when you look at LSU's offense, I, I know there's a lot of change um, there, and but there's also obviously a lot of talent at certain positions. How deep uh, of a dive has has the staff been doing, and how far does it go back in terms of trying to get a game plan ready so you guys aren't starting this week? Well, with a staff change, it always goes back to who's calling the plays, um, and then the personnel that they have. You know, so that's twofold. Sometimes when that question is answered, it's the same thing, returning coach, returning players, it makes it a little bit more um, clean as far as the breakdowns. When those are different, that, that's when it becomes a little bit more of you got to be smart on what information you're using. You know, so I think no matter what personnel is, the play caller, uh, his personality, um, his organizational structure of how he calls games, does things, like you're always taking that. So there's a history of that that you got to put in play. And then the players he has, um, and that's not all LSU. You know, that could be transfers, could be incoming freshmen. Um, so you just, those are the puzzle pieces that you have to put together. And that's why, you know, you need to get that work started in the summer. And um, there's some history there, too. And, um, you know, we've coached against this staff um, in different pieces in different ways and some of the players as well. So, you know, there's some history there, uh, which helps. Uh, but it's definitely, you know, there's, there's a bigger folder up there when it says LSU 2022. You know, there's a bunch of subfolders that you got to kind of put together and say, you know, and then as you get going through it, you know, other things will come up. And it'll say, hey, when he had this type of wideout, what years was it and what did it look like then? You know, so those type of things always come up. Second row, what's up? Um, I don't think um... – They've named a starter yet that I've seen um, for a quarterback. So um, how do you guys prepare for both quarterbacks? Because um, they do have a little bit of different styles as well. You get ready for both quarterbacks. Yeah. You know, that's pretty much how you have to do it. Um, you know, and, you know, quarterbacks are quarterbacks. You're always studying the backups. You're studying the starters. Um, you know, it's just these guys are a little bit, they just haven't, you know, there's a chance that could be a starter that hasn't played in an LSU uniform, but I mean, there's enough film out there. You can get a good sense of who people are and you try to put that person to another quarterback in the system before and you try to piece that together. Brendan? The play of Tatum Bethune, could you just kind of break down what you saw from him and then linebackers in general, please? Yeah, I thought Tatum did a nice job. I mean, he flashed. You know, we show cut ups on Sunday. Um, you know, sometimes we show make a play cut up of just guys, you know, in their one on ones. And, you know, Tatum had a nice play. And, you know, he just he brings a good energy. You know, Tatum was exactly the way I thought he would be on game day. Um, and, you know, I was proud of him, thought he did a nice job, definitely brings something to us. Um, you know, I think, you know, we rolled some of those linebackers through a little bit. Um, I think for the most part, I thought they, they played well together and they led the defense for the most part. I thought they did a nice job Saturday night. You, you talked about studying the, uh, the, the play caller. I guess I know you coached against him twice in 2019, right? I guess what were your impressions of Denbrock then and what he might bring to LSU? Yeah, I mean, he's been super successful in every place he's been. Um, you know, there's a reason why Coach Kelly's one of the best in the business and he, you know, brought him with him to LSU. So, you know, they were a challenge back then in 19 um, to prepare for. Um, you know, they had good players, like they have good players at LSU too. And, you know, everybody's got their own um, personality to play calling. Everybody's got their own um, stamp that they try to put on things, regardless of what players they have. And then some guys are more tailored to change. Um, some people aren't. And so, you know, whether it's just situational, whether it's scheme, uh, whether it's use of players, I think it's all part of the evaluation when you put a plan together. Uh, but um, Coach Dembrock's been super, super successful in a lot of different ways. He's, he's been really balanced. 
um, and he's had success at a number of different places. You had uh, several other transfers besides Tatum that played for the first time in games. Um, did you learn anything new about either Greedy or, or any of those other guys that uh, Jared, the first time seeing them in a game? Yeah, I don't think I, we learned anything new. Um, you know, I think there were some opportunities out there for all the different players that were out there. And I, you know, I came out of that game pretty much with the same information on our defense and the same information on, on, on the players. Um, obviously, there were some things that guys flashed in really good ways. Sometimes there were some things that, you know, we got to correct. But, you know, I think we came out of that game ver verifying a lot of our thoughts on, on the group that we have out there and, and the rotations. How valuable, I stole this question, I guess. Uh, how, how valuable was it to have a uh, freshman like Azaria Thomas, Daniel Lyons get 20 or so snaps to be able to play a lot? Uh, what kind of information can you gather from that? Yeah, that's a good question, Chris. You know. <laughs> I think very valuable, right? And, and in those games, it's always, you know, and I tell the coaches, you know, whatever your plan is, just stick to it when it comes to rotations, especially when you're in games like that and it starts to get, you know, away from the opponent pretty quick. And, you know, we tried to stick to a rotation. Then at one point, I just, you know, I kind of let them know what plan B is from now what is the rotation when you start moving guys around in games like that. But I thought our, our guys, the ability to keep focused, what I loved about it was on the sidelines, you know, in the last play of the game when SRA comes up and makes a tackle with Omar Graham and how excited our guys got when Rodney Hill scored, you know, to see our sideline get excited. Um, I, that shows you something about your football team. Um, the other one that you mentioned was Daniel Lyons. Daniel played really well. Um, there's a reason, you know, you can empty your bench in games like that, um, you know, but what we did is the guys that deserve to get in the game, you know, we try to get them in the game and because they've earned the right to do it. And playing out there on that field is special. And when you get an opportunity to do it, regardless of the score, um, it was good to see some of those young guys take advantage of it. Duquesne got rid of the ball quickly, kind of neutralizing some of the pass rush results. But how did those guys on the front porch do as far as creating pressure and doing their job against the run Yeah, I mean, game? even the first third down, you know, I think we put the quarterback down. Um, I think Jared walked the tackle back into him, and, and Derek got the edge and kind of got a piece of him too. So, you know, we came free on a couple stunts, but I mean, you know, there, there weren't many opportunities. They were one of 10 on third down, and, you know, the one they got was a short yardage flat route that we busted. But I you know, I thought our guys up front did a nice job. I mean, you know, we're a four man rush team and our guys did a nice job creating rushes when they needed to. And um, I was happy with the the upfront performance. Go back to Ira. When you uh the safeties, I mean obviously Jamie has a reputation, but it seemed like I mean, he was seemed like he made it very active, made a lot of plays. Um, is he has he changed any? Is he a different player at all than he was a year ago? Um, has he developed even though he was first team All ACC last year? Yeah, he's better right now than he was when he finished the season. Um, he's playing um, he's playing more tight to his frame. You know, his you see that one pass breakup he made on the on the crossing route towards their sideline in space and just the violence that he got the ball out. You know, and then when we played him at dime, he had a one-on-one -on -one player on their sideline on a third down, and just he's a lot more calm in coverage. Um, you know, he is an accelerator, he is a violent mover, um, but just getting him in really good position, and when he's at the top of the play, things slow down for him right now. And so I thought he did a nice job with that. Uh, he's always been good when he sees the ball and running and tackling and running the alley, but the coverage stuff, I think he's really made a lot of strides with. Um, you know, we, we had him in on one blitz um, Saturday night, too, that was planned for him. Um, so just finding different ways to get your good players in action. After the game on Saturday, Coach Norvell sounded pretty confident about Duke's availability for this coming week. Just, I guess, how confident are you in his, his effectiveness and how vital will he be considering, you know, LSU's weapons on the uh, perimeter? Yeah, I mean, it, if we put him out there, Duke will be ready. You know, and, you know he was out there last night moving around and, um, you know, Duke did everything he could to play in that game. I mean, it, it, it hurt him. Uh, but I told him, you know, you, you go, you try to get ready, and it's going to be my decision, not yours. And I think that helps him, you know, 
feel like he doesn't need to do above and beyond. And, you know, so, you know, I, I trust Duke. He works extremely hard in that training room on the practice field. Um, he's very reliable, and I know he'll give everything he can to be out there this coming up Sunday. Last one. Last one. Just a... Could you share kind of your, your thoughts at first glance of guys like Kayshawn Butte and Malik Neighbors is a guy that they've talked about having really good camp. Uh, Jack Besh is a guy, true freshman, caught 40 passes, just their receiving core as a whole. Yeah, super talented. Um, Butte is, I mean, he's, I say this with all respect, I mean, it's, he's a tailback when he catches the ball. You know, he just, he cuts, he makes people miss. You know, he runs the daylight. Um, you know, he's got really strong hands. Uh, but to see him explode through tacklers, you know, was impressive for a for a wide receiver. You know, and he's taking short balls and making them into long runs. He's taking distance balls and got in the end zone. Um, he's caught contested catches. Um, you know, really good player. Okay, thanks, coach. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. See you guys.